Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Firstly, a big, big thank you to everyone who liked my previous videos or uh, engaged with it. Uh, trust me, it means a lot. So, my name is Prerna. I have a nine to five job. But apart from that, I love traveling. I have been doing that uh, solo specifically for the last couple of years. And um, I recently went on a Europe trip. I'm back from it. It was a one month trip. And I covered around 10 countries. Yes, it was 10 countries. But believe you me, it was not really um, exhausting as such. I really enjoyed it. Plan my trip accordingly. But um, there's so much to share right now that which I feel I need to in terms of the places to go, the things to see, the cost, the process, things to keep in mind, do's, don'ts. And um, yeah, so I'm learning editing. It's not really that easy as I thought, <laughs> but anyways. So uh, meanwhile, I wanted to share some uh, content with you, which I feel is really, really important, which I had no idea about, but I feel it's uh, very, very critical to know. So keep watching and um, please let me know if you have any comments, if you have any feedback or if you want to add on to it, uh, put it down in the description. And uh, if you really like my videos, please feel free to uh, subscribe, like, share and comment. It means a lot to me. Uh, for people who have just started, it means those small steps actually uh, work like a very good motivation for us. So thank you. Let's get started. So today we are going to talk about applications or mobile apps as we know it. So um, almost for every other thing there is an app in Europe. In every country they have their own apps and for different purposes. And they work really well. They facilitate the work process really easy. They save you time and um, make things very very easy. But um, which app to download for which country and uh, how does it work, which is important, which is not important because you might be overwhelmed by the number of applications available as well. So this video is going to be just about the apps that you must download with some alternative options which you can see which works best for you and um, they are definitely a must. So I have sorted them down into different categories, for example, accommodation, flights and some internal apps related to countries and um, so yeah, just uh, take your call accordingly whichever country you're going and keep watching and do let me know if you have already used those apps which one is your favorite and um, i will list them down as per what i have used personally also i will give some alternatives of which i've heard are really good but i have not personally used them so i will mention all of that into the description please have a look so let's get started So the first one that we have is accommodation. So accommodation can be of different types. You can book an Airbnb, you can book a hotel, you can book hostels. There are multiple options. It uh, depends on your budget with how many people you are traveling and what sort of a trip are you looking forward to. Is it going to be like a luxurious trip or is it going to be like a budget trip? So these things depend on that. First is booking.com. I think uh, everyone knows that. It's pretty famous. It's very good. Uh, but I will just tell you one thing from my experience I did not use booking.com because for some reason it was not working for me my card kept getting declined uh, none of my cards worked actually even when I was back in India so even if I wanted I could not use um, so the application that I used heavily and I think mostly for all my bookings would be agoda.com so it has an application as well and it has a site as well so agoda is pretty friendly I actually had no issues with it as well uh, it's very good um, if you have watched my previous videos you remember while booking uh, your visa application you need to submit your accommodation or uh, stays options as well so that has uh, under agoda you have an option called free cancellation pay at the hotel options so what that technically means is you can just reserve your booking now and you do not have to pay a single penny but when you reach the hostel or when you reach the hotel or airbnb there and there you have to go and pay so that is the option i chose uh, for me it was more like a budget trip and also because i was traveling solo my preference was hostels everywhere a thing to note in mind is a lot of countries in europe have something called as a tourist fee so for example for per night it would be around four euro, four euros or uh, somewhere it was around two euros so this is like a tourist fee that you have to pay apart from the normal bookings that you are doing but that is something that you might have to pay when you reach the hotel so even if you're making all the payments in advance please note this is an additional fee that happens in uh, europe uh, having said that there are a few other places that are really good uh, in terms of applications or sites that you can use to make your bookings i will mention them so one is hostelworld.com that is specifically for hostels we have hotel tonight 
uh, we have couch surfing and which is then we have airbnb so i think if you have all of these uh, applications um, you are more or less sorted next we have is food so in terms of food uh, since i am a vegetarian i did have a problem at times to find out food but not like a really really bad but uh, having said that a lot of cafes a lot of uh, restaurants you will find uh, something or the other at least the snacks were pretty easily to um, you know in case if you want to grab something but uh, for non vegetarians obviously there is no problem uh, in case if you want to find food specifically uh, we do have some apps for that as well so there is something called eat with we have a uh, with locals we have the folk happy cow and yelp so uh, happy cow and yelp are two specific uh, applications that you can download if you are looking for specifically veg options so once you download these apps you would be able to locate uh, options that are specific for vegetarians so that really helps uh, the, i think to be honest the only application that i used was happy cow to locate veg restaurants at times otherwise i would just uh, go with the flow if i like a place or if uh, there's a specific recommendation i have had from a, a friend or i've read somewhere that i need to go to a specific restaurant or a cafe to try it i would go there so the next is car rental if you're traveling as a couple or with family car renting is an amazing option to travel around europe easily you can navigate from one place to another i did not do that <laughs> i was using the public transport mostly but uh, if you were looking for car rentals there are three applications that i've heard very highly of and we can definitely give that a try so one is rental cars uh, the next is europe car and the next is sixt s i x t so just go through that that will help you get those car rentals all your issues sorted and you can very freely move around europe to be honest this is something where you sort of um, do not enjoy solo traveling much um, at times i wish i had company and we could just take a car and roam around as and when you feel like but yeah that's how it is so next is uh, transport so what do i mean when i say uh transport so here i mean primarily uh booking cabs like uh uber ola things like that so these are the options to be honest i was mostly using public transport but there were a lot of points where i did had to use a uh, you know get a cab so cabs are really expensive in europe so if you are traveling with a group you can definitely rent a car or otherwise public transport works the best but yes so one we have is gojek grab uber blaba car movit and lift I'll tell you the ones which two which I used. So uh, I did use Uber. Very friendly. We all are used to the interface of it. It works the same. The second one is Blabla Car. So what is a Blabla Car? So that is basically a sharing pool sharing cab uh, service. So where people are traveling from one point to another point, and meanwhile they will upload their journey on the app. For example, a specific person is riding from point A to point B. They would mention what time, what date, and when and where they are traveling, and they would also mention their car which they are using and the price so this is not like a commercial people they are like regular people who are renting out their car as a pool service so how this works is uh, firstly if you have uh, some impromptu plans and you have not booked your train or bus tickets and you need to go to a certain place this works really handy uh, secondly it's cheaper than uh, at times than uh, public transport at times and so uh, it works really well but the thing to note in mind is just do your due diligence uh, in terms of the ratings of that person has a person taken rides before and um, i mean if it's a late night one just make sure you are you know just just do your due diligence if you feel comfortable or if you feel it's the right way to go i did use it a couple of times to be honest because um, i was moving around so much i did have a lot of change in plans so this worked really really well for me at times one or two people were really sweet like they were drop uh, their drop was a little far away but still they would drop me till my hostel um, so it works really well in terms of uh, you get to have a conversation with the person yeah, i i did have like good conversations with those people and they were really sweet at times uh, but once um, it also happened that uh, the person never turned up and my money was already deducted though i got a refund back but then that that led, did lead to a lot of change here and there so keep it as like a safe backup option in case if you're stuck or if you cannot find anything but uh, other than that uh, i think it's good i have heard good reviews about it as well 
So after cab, we have bus. So hands down, the one and the only and the best option is Flix bus. So Flix bus is a very economical way of uh, intercity transport and intercountry transport. A uh, very friendly, uh, user friendly app. Just go for it blindly. However, there is another app called Regio Jet. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. So this app is. Um, I don't think it's present in all the countries, but around the Czech Republic area, this app was quite functional. Uh, also, a bit in Italy, I guess. So, uh, my experience, I did take two of my buses with RegioJet, and both of the experiences were pretty good. So, in case uh, in some of the countries, if you are traveling, you find the option of RegioJet, you can easily go forward with that as well. So after buses we have got trains. For trains, uh, the train availability is amazing. A lot of countries have their own internal applications for all the transport or specifically for trains. So when I would be making videos for those specific countries, I would put them into the description and I will mention that so that you can have a look at it. But there are two applications uh, for train bookings which work overall. So that would be train line and rail Europe. You can uh, download these applications and uh, have a good understanding which train goes from which side to which side, timings, cost and everything. Uh, coming to now two apps which I think were my absolute favorite and which I use the most and that would be uh, apps which uh, help you navigate routes and uh, ways of transport from one city to another, one country to another. So that is called Omeo. O M I O and the second one is called Rome to Rio. So how this works is you just enter your location from which place to which place you want to go and the dates and it will tell you all the possible uh, ways to reach that specific place. So that includes flights, bus, train, even blah blah cars for example and also ferries at times. So it tells you everything. So you can just filter out in terms of cost, in terms of uh, uh, how much time do you want to spend, when do you want to depart, when do you want to reach. You just put in your filters and you can select which is the best way for you and just book so it you can book it directly through the app again it's very convenient i did a lot of bookings through umeo and um, i never had any problem so i really really love the app it was, worked amazing for me the second uh, similar app is home to rio a uh, similarity you just enter from which place you want to go to which place and it will then show you all the possible routes options even from which time to catch which bus and everything is very detailed down so even this app is something that you will definitely need before you are going to europe as well like how to plan like if you want to go to one place to another this app really helped and this is the app that i actually use to plan my whole europe trip before applying for the visa as well like you know if i want to move from france to belgium how do i go and how much time will it take what are the costs that i need to incur and bookings as well so hands down the best uh, for the flight bookings we all know skyscanner very famous very good um, thumbs up so hands down if you want to look for some other options that are really good as well is uh, Expedia Kayak and Vigo uh, WVGO Kayak is really a good option again as well I did one of my flight bookings through that and I had like a very good experience so definitely you can go forward with Kayak so I did not take any flights personally internally for multiple reasons but in case if you want to go from one city or one country to another there are multiple flight options you can book them in advance as well to get them at a good rate uh, and uh, uh, yeah, and to, the thing to note in mind is if you are, have like a small luggage just like a carry-on and, and like maybe hardly any luggage you get really really cheap flights so when you're booking flights please please keep a note of the luggage that is allowed because mostly it's not added and in case you just go forward and book it just make sure that it's added otherwise go ahead and add it separately so that was one of the reasons I did not uh, go for any flight bookings because I had my luggage and it was adding tremendously the price every time and also I feel it uh, did not work out for me because uh, airports are generally at a little farther location so I had to go from the central to the airport reach 2-3 hours before keep a little buffer time in case I get lost or how to navigate then the flights and then you come back again to the center that sort of takes like a huge time instead of that I prefer overnight buses which saves me time as well in terms of my trip uh, is cost efficient as well and um, 
yeah i mean i just travel from the city center to the city center so that works really well also i did not do any long tours as such as well for the same reason like not like going from one end of country to one end of europe to the other so it was more like pit stops and like a chain journey which i did so i did not really have much long distances to cover as well so that were my reasons but uh, in case if you're going go for it um, please note there are a lot of economical carriers that are available so because of which they are at times not very uh, functional in terms of uh, punctuality so keep some buffer time before and after do not keep like a very hectic schedule planned up because in case of like gets delayed or cancelled your things are not messed up okay so now how do you figure out the uh, routes so google maps perfectly well amazing no doubt perfectly fine except there's a catch so let me know even if you have faced that or if you know about it somehow for some reason i don't know if it's a generic thing the google maps in italy did not work really well for me it got me lost many times it gave me wrong directions i kept on going in circles a many a times somehow i felt uh, the google maps in italy itself uh, was not good it was a very bad idea so in case if you're planning to go to italy i would say keep a backup which would be something called maps.me uh, keep that application that would be really handy do not do not rely on google maps uh, for italy that is my personal experience uh, other than that all the other countries perfectly fine no one so next very important language so a lot of countries are very specific when it comes to the languages um, english is not the first language and people are not really very keen on knowing english and also it's a good always a good idea to learn the local language or at least uh, learn a few bits of the local language uh, that sort of makes you a part of the culture you try and understand things better and it's always always the people will respond you better you will get better replies you will get better acceptance from the locals if you try and initiate at least a conversation in their language so uh, you can use duolingo to pick up few words and like a, a, you know having some general conversations apart from that um, use google translate so google translate is an app please keep it downloaded you have separate languages there uh, i would suggest keep the offline version downloaded uh, for safety purposes in case if you're lost you're not depending on internet or uh, downloaded for the countries or for the languages that you need or uh, that you know you would be needing uh, having said that to be honest i did not have uh, so much of a problem as compared to any other individual that is because i already know spanish language very well i studied it for 3 years and i'm certified as well so spanish is again a language which is extremely widely spoken all across europe so even if uh, i did not go to spain and spain is not like the first language of these countries as well it's still much better spoken than english uh, by many people or a lot of it, uh, people from spain and latin america were traveling so i could easily interact make friends and have a conversation so this is just like a <laughs> side trivia but um, which really helped me so keep the google translate downloaded for sure and do pick up some words it really helps and it's a way for us to show respect to someone else so next is the most interesting part actually which is a uh, day trips hike or things to do like how do i figure out what to do in this country how do i figure out uh, where to what you know how to get tickets to so and so place what are the options available for me to navigate here how do i get hold of things i'm going to tell you so uh firstly i will tell you the list of all the applications that i have with me listed and then i'll tell you the few of my favorites and what are their purposes so we have all trails get your guide cluck guru walk sandman free tour wilder trip advisor culture trip uh 65 head out tickets like a local so these are the applications that i would recommend in case if you have ample time before your trip and you want to do your research really well but in case if you're short of time and you just want to know hey prena just tell me the two or three most important ones i got you okay so there's something called walking tours that happen a lot over europe all the countries this is quite common so what does a walking tour mean so you book 
tours uh, on the application they will be telling you how what is the duration of the tour for example it's generally from one hour to something around two and a half hours one and a half to two and a half hours the timing is mentioned they start at a specific point and they cover a couple of places which is also mentioned down like which all places will we be traveling to the place is mentioned another time a meeting point and the meeting time is mentioned so for example it's like a morning walking tour i go around at 10 30 at the meeting point or uh, generally a uh, symbol is mentioned for example the guide will be there with a green flag or a yellow umbrella or a red t-shirt or something like that which you can easily spot so you go to that place you look for that um, identification you will uh, probably end up finding the guide you talk to the person just make sure you tell him that you know i have come he will just mark your uh, name as present and then uh, you start walking they wait around 10 to 15 minutes for people to gather up and then you just start walking for one hour one and a half hour two hour so walking is a really important and a major culture in europe all across europe people love walking and uh, i think it's a really really good thing so walking culture uh, has been imbibed like this so you start the tour everyone gathers up and the tour guide he starts taking you to those uh, points which have been told and meanwhile on the way he gives you information about the culture or the religion or food whatever is the tour about so once that thing is done uh, you come back and meet up at a specific point mostly it's the same point where you stopped and then uh, you it's based on tips so once you are registering on the app or once you go you don't have to pay anything but once you reach come back to the point you generally pay a tip which you feel is uh, the right amount for that uh, trip that you did how much did you like if you want to pay uh, more if you want to pay less that, that's completely voluntary and your decision and yeah that's how it works so for this um, there are two apps that i would recommend one is sandemans free walking tour and one is guru walk so the one which i used personally the most was guru walk guru walk i think hands down the best so you just mention the location for example i am in prague i enter prague and i enter the date and it will give me a drop down of all the walking tours that are available and from the description i can make out which one i am interested in, in terms of timing as well so for example i like a uh, uh, food uh, so for example I want to do like a historic walking tour where they will talk about more about the culture and the history of Prague so I could probably make it out from the description I check the timing it suits me and then also uh, the languages are mentioned so for example mostly the walking tours are in English but they are at times in Spanish as well and could be at times in other languages so you select the English part and you just select the timing you book and instantly you get like a reservation that you know you have been booked for this you reach at that point and the whole process very very simple amazing way to know a new city perfect if you're traveling alone um, good way to make friends and good way to spend time if you have no idea what to do if you're clueless if you had like a sudden plan and you don't know what to navigate how to navigate so perfect also it's amazing if you uh, are planning to spend a lot of days in a country or in a city so I think uh, that is what I did. So in the places where I was spending a lot of time, the first day I would just do walking tours so that I get to know what are the places, what is the history, what is the culture behind it. And um, I would pick up and note down the points that really interest me. And the next day I would navigate uh, much deeper onto my own. Okay. Uh, and then something really, really important in terms of tickets. So there are a lot of museums, church, palaces, uh, things to do, experiences which happen all across Europe in different countries. Uh, and two of the best applications where you can get to know about them and also book them would be Kluk and uh, Get Your Guide. So Kluk and Get Your Guide are very, very user friendly, uh, works amazingly well. Just enter the location and you will see and the date and you will see multiple options of all the things to do all the things to see and experiences and everything just go ahead book it you pay online and uh, yeah i did not have any issues all my bookings were done through either head out or get your guide or click so head out is another option that you can navigate it's good and another option that you can check if you have a lot of time and you want to you know check prices which one is better is called tickets Tickets also has um, good options. I used tickets in Italy once or twice because it was compa cheaper compared to Cloak or uh, Get Your Guide. So 
so these four if you download it you're like sorted for everything like there's not any one experience which i guess if you have downloaded these four you will not get to see so uh lastly i would want to mention a very important app uh, which is not really a mandatory but uh, something that i found out and i absolutely absolutely love it so it's called tripit so what this app does is uh, so if you're making any bookings you get generally get tickets on your email and so on and so forth so you just have to sync your uh, gmail account to this app and it automatically picks up any reservations or any tickets that you have done and it uh, sort of plans the trip for you so for example if i did 10 tickets 10 bookings uh, when i open the app and i have synced it i can automatically see it has planned my trip that you know on 10th you are going here from this and this date on 12th you're going from here from this and this date so it works amazing amazing when you're traveling solo if you're traveling multiple countries you're looking uh booking through multiple sites multiple websites so instead of you manually creating like an itinerary it creates like an itinerary from you in terms of the bookings that you have done also uh it's not like it's only automated you can also put in manually the information so for example if you have um, uh, something planned up from 5 to 6 pm you can automatically you can manually go enter the thing that you're planning to do the timing and the timeout so it will add you to the itinerary so it plans your itinerary and it's amazing way to look at it because uh, to be honest <laughs> after a couple of days even i lost track of where i was what was my plan what have i done like you know i think in italy towards the end of my trip i was like uh, do i have the tickets booked i don't even remember okay what am i supposed to do here you know it's just gets a little overwhelming so i used to just open the app and i can easily see what is my plan and um, if i have booked something if i have not booked something which part is pending so i can see 17th is like complete plan oh i need to plan something for 17th so all of this uh, really helps and this is something that you can definitely and should do before even you apply for your schengen visa or before you are uh, leaving for the trip so that everything is sorted so once you go there you don't have to you know move around with any sheet or any uh, document and how to go about it it's all on the app everything is documented you just have to look at it and it's sorted so now let's talk about money yes so in terms of conversion if you're traveling multiple countries the rates are changing you're moving from one currency to other because the whole of europe does not really use euros uh, there are a lot of countries have their own currency and it's it, you cannot really just keep on converting your money every time in terms of cash so uh, I will tell you how I managed my finances. So in terms of card, I was carrying two cards primarily, which is the Neo Global card and the Wise card. So Wise is a actually a local card uh, in Europe. We do not really get it in India, which works which works like amazing. So you load your money in Europe uh, euros and then you can just tap it and use it anywhere. You have a digital card of it as well, which you just have to tap and scan and you have you get like a physical card as well. So this is amazing, but again, it does not uh, come to India or you cannot get it here. In terms of travel card, I was just carrying the new global credit card and um, I had mixed review. I had heard mixed reviews about it, to be honest, and I was a little skeptical about it, uh, to be honest, but uh, it worked out really well, to be honest, touch wood. <laughs> I did not face any problem with the app, uh, worked out perfectly well, did not get stuck anywhere, and um, yeah, I think it was pretty super smoothless for me. I could use just tap and use the card anywhere, I could limit the restrictions, uh, and um, worked out perfectly well for me i could just load it whenever i wanted and i did not have any issues but having said that i would suggest if you can carry an extra forex card do carry it uh, having said that i did carry my um, local card which is the hdfc card which i have credit card uh, which also has international transactions allowed for me so in case like a backup and i think i just once or twice once i had to use it and again it worked the markup fee is definitely there but apart from that i think it worked i did get cash converted here before going so get that because um, that is definitely important everywhere you cannot just depend on your cards and also when you're getting the cash converted try and carry the small currencies as well so for example in europe uh, specifically for washrooms or water or small uh, expenses you need small euros so 
it's easier to get them if you have like a smaller currency like a 10 euro or something like that but if you're only carrying like a bigger currency like 500 or 100 at times it gets difficult so get smaller currencies when you are getting your cash converted for me so basically that's how i manage my expenses uh, i was having the apple wallet the new global card the wise card uh, both digital and physical and also my hdfc card so and uh, definitely some cash so i think um, quite backups and uh, i do not face any money issues to be honest because of all of these reasons so next is sim very 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 important um so here i might talk about it in detail in another video uh, but here why i'm mentioning sim is uh, there is something called as e sims which um, maybe you know but uh, i have no idea about how it works or what it is until unless i got stuck somewhere so um two very good carriers which i was aware about in um, europe is Leica and libara so Leica being the best one so uh, when i went to purchase my sim i did not get Leica, but the person had libara and he mentioned that it's pretty good and it's not a problem and i asked uh, you know i looked up online it had decent reviews as well so i was like okay fine it's not the best but whatever i get right now uh, but to be honest my experience was not good with libara so in case if you can please don't get libara and just go for Leica instead i have heard very good reviews about it uh, so because of uh, having libara i got stuck at a couple of places where my internet was not working really well or it got stuck and um, they required some registration and things like that so having you know when i was stuck uh, i had to look for something immediately and that's when i came to know about eSIMs. so uh, for example like i mentioned Kluk in Kluk you have options of eSIMs as well so how does that work is you can uh, look for the number of days you want like an internet service for example two days i want an internet service and uh, you can just uh, Pay, uh, the amount is mentioned and uh, you just select which country you are in or which region you want the access uh, to internet and uh, yeah you can just purchase an eSIM you pay you get like a QR code or like a um, coupon code or something like that in your email I don't recollect and uh, they have a guidebook where they tell you how to get download that eSIM if uh, so you can just go to, uh, mostly all the phones have eSIM options now so you just enter that QR code or that code that is given to you and your SIM gets downloaded you activate it and voila it works so I think it's a very good backup option in case if you get stuck and you can find that option in Clook as well also um, when i looked up uh, there's also option of pickup of sims so in case whenever you're reaching the airport uh, you would definitely need a sim to reach to your first destination so probably you can just look up if there's a pickup service available like uh, before even uh, reaching that uh, country you can already book like a pickup and a pay so once you reach that place uh, there could be an option where you can just uh, the counters are there and you can just pick up your sim and go to that uh, specific location so this helps in case um, it's economical and it's uh, something really handy because uh, sims at airports are like super super costly so just something that i discovered which i felt uh, could be really helpful so yeah these are some of the apps which are really really helpful you should and could use uh, apart and these are in generic sense uh, every country now if you go to they have their own internal transport app or something that very specific to them for example in italy you have an app which helps you find fountains yes i mean not the fountain fountain water fountains as they call it so water fountains are like um, uh, for you can use it to drinking water for drinking water it's very uh, the water is pretty good so you can just go onto that app and you can find the next water fountain that way you spare save a lot on uh, you know not purchasing water again and again you have an app which helps you find washrooms uh, but again that is specifically for italy that my app might not work in other countries but another country might have their own app so as and when i talk about the different uh, countries and experiences through that i will probably mention those uh, apps during those time but these are mostly the general apps that you should do and uh, go through them uh, research them before your trip specifically so that um, this all of this will help you plan your itinerary completely so in case if you are traveling solo specifically and you're like I don't know what to do, how to do, like it's so crazy, it's so overwhelming and there's overload of information. These apps will help you finalize everything. I really, really, really hope this helped you and um, cleared a lot of your doubts 
uh, helped you clear the confusion of how to go about things and uh, made things a lot more sorted and um, yeah i hope you liked this video if you have any questions any comments any feedback please put it into the comments and um, yeah looking forward to meet you guys again in my next video for now uh, have a good day and thank you so much please feel free to subscribe to my channel that means a lot to me